When Canada joined the First World War, it had two ships, both built in the 1890s, the Niobe and the Rainbow. The Royal Canadian Navy itself had only been founded four years earlier in 1910. On the West Coast Naval Base, there was a worry over a German attack considering there was little in the way of defence to stop it. Sir Richard McBride, the Premier of British Columbia, attended a meeting with several of Victoria's prominent citizens and they decided that they would purchase two complete submarines through G. V. Patterson, the President of the Seattle Construction and Dry Dock Company. McBride was extremely in favour of the idea of submarines and he began holding meetings on the matter in his office. Even though he could not commit Sir Robert Borden to the idea, McBride decided to go alone. On August 3, 1914, it was decided the provincial government would advance money pending remittance for the submarines. The two submarines had actually been built for Chile and Chile had paid $714,000 of the $818,000 purchase price, but this was now in arrears. Patterson was willing to declare the Chile contract void and sell the boats to the British Columbia government at a cost of $575,000 each. British Columbia had to act fast, because as soon as Britain went to war, the United States would pass legislation prohibiting the sale of armed submarines to any country involved in the war. At dawn on August 5, 1914, five miles off the coast of Vancouver Island, delivery of the funds was made, totaling $1.15 million. That would be about $28 million today. The two submarines were cast off only the night before and officially they never left the American harbour filed no paperwork and had no clearance documents. Royal Canadian Navy personnel wore plain clothes to ensure the Chilean government officials and naval personnel were ignorant of the operation. Once in international waters, the submarines were inspected and declared acceptable. The bank draft was handed over and the crew of retired and active Royal Navy personnel, including civilians, took over the submarines. Since the exchange had happened in international waters, no neutrality legislation had been broken. The submarines were designated as CC-1 and CC-2. Along with the HMCS Rainbow, these were the only naval vessels protecting Canadian waters on the west coast. In 1917, CC-1 was transferred to the east coast, passing through the Panama Canal. The submarine became the first Canadian warship to traverse the canal under the White Ensign. Deemed unsafe for transatlantic crossings, CC-1 stayed at Halifax for coastal defence. In 1920, the ship was laid up and five years later broken up, having never seen action. As for CC-2, it would soon be transferred to the east coast in 1917 and put on coastal defence. It would finish the war as a training vessel and be put up for sale in 1920 and scrapped in 1925. While these ships were under repair in Halifax Harbour, they both survived the Halifax explosion which happened on December 1917. As for McBride, he was before a royal commission to defend his purchase and he would state he felt estranged by the decisions of Ottawa. Nonetheless, those were the first two submarines in Canadian history. If you enjoy Canadian history, then check out my podcast Canadian History X, available on all podcast platforms.